Hey guys, Shane here, Vigadec 3D Printing. Today we're going to look at Transparent Red Pet G from Toner Plastics. So welcome back guys. Again, we're taking a look at Toner Plastics Pet G and this is in their Trans Red, so Transparent Red, which is pretty nice. Uh, they sent this to me a while back with their Rich Teal, which you can see the video, I'll link it here at the end. Uh, you can see my review on that filament. So thank you Toner Plastic for you know supporting the channel and sending me some filament to create some content. Let's open it up, take a look at it. As soon as I find my knife. So obviously it comes in a nice sealed bag. And if you were to buy this, I assume it would probably be in a box. But since they sent me these, I just got these two together in their own box. But yours probably come in a nice retail box. Uh, there was desiccant down in there. A uh, nice one spool. Interesting smell. Um, plasticky. That's actually really nicely wound. Can we look at that? Holy smokes. That's actually really nicely wound. Probably the best wound I've seen. Nice and smooth. Uh, so again, this is just transparent red pet G. Let's take a look at the spool and see what it says. So it's toner plastics, gives you their address, uh, the SKU number I guess here. It's one kilogram, 2.2 pounds, the lot number. So if you have any issues, so that's really nice that companies do this. So if you ever have any issues with a filament that just won't print, I mean, there's just something wrong with it, write back to the company and say, hey, I have lot number and give them the color and the all any of the information here on these stickers. And they'd be like, oh, you know what? We actually had a bad batch. Let us send you a new spool. Hell, they might even send you two spools. I know Hatchbox has done that for people because they have had bad spools come out. Hey, it happens. You know, it's, it's quality control. They can't catch them all, but, you know, they're not Pokemon. But, you know, they can catch it most of the time. But you can write back to them saying, hey, I'm having really crappy prints with this. They'll take care of you. So make sure you do that. And especially for a company like Toner Plastics, great customer support. They've been with me, the, I mean, this whole time talking to them about different things. Uh, they love to talk to you about it. They're not a huge company, but they're not small either. They take care, so make sure you keep that in mind. There is nothing on here for the uh, settings, which I wish they would have done, but I'll go on the website and check that out. Uh, it's really nice when companies like Hatchbox, for example, again, uh, they put the settings right on the spool so you know what to do. That's a, it's not a need to have, it's just a nice to have. Again, beautifully wound. Nice uh, single spool construction. This really looks familiar. The spool kind of looks like the Proto Paradigm spools, which actually, yes, these probably are the same spools. And uh, who was it? It was uh, Dustin, the Jatman. In one of his recent videos, he talked about spools. Sorry, this is off topic here, but uh, he talked about spools. And basically, there's only a few that actually manufacture spools. And also some of them look like Hatchbox has a similar look to other ones. Uh, Toner Plastics looks the same as Proto Paradigms. They probably all buy from the same place because why design your own and pay all that money when you can just buy them for cheap from in bulk. So anyways, uh, it's a good spool design. I like it. Let's do some big prints. Let's do some small prints. Let's roll some time lapses and get this thing moving.
right, so welcome back. Let's look at these prints, because they are pretty awesome. First one, I've talked about this in a couple other videos. So this is the new X carriage that I printed out for my G-Tech Persi 3 aluminum to accommodate the Titan and a E3D V6 hot end. This was, I mean, I printed this with 10% uh, infill uh, to keep it nice and light. It might have been actually, I think it was 15% actually on this one. Uh, three bottom, th four bottom, three top three perimeters to try and keep this nice and strong because I knew it was going to be moving a lot and I didn't want it to deform at all and it came out great. So sadly I did have support enabled and inside these holes where the zip ties go to hold in the bearings there is support in there so you can't get to it so I had to reprint this and I printed it in some orange PLA which is now on the printer. But this PETG is super super strong. Uh, I've already dropped this actually twice and it's come back up with no problem. Uh, it had no problem with any of the bridgings or any of the flat areas where there wasn't support or even where there was support. It held on great. I will say that the support with PETG holds on much, much harder than it does with a PLA. So I might need to actually alter my support settings just for PETG. I haven't looked into that yet, but that might be something I have to look at. But this was a crazy cool and a crazy great print. Beautiful. Now for a functional print, I have this little sponge holder. So this gets mounted to the wall right above your sink. And here I have a, one of our spare sponges. And it just sits on there just like so. And I had to reprint this because I had it printed in PLA with a lower infill from what I believe. And this bottom part actually snapped off because we have another sponge, not this one, but it fits in perfectly right here. And this sponge holds it in there if it ever was to want to fall out. So this is a great, great file. I'll put this down below. This is printed with 50% infill because I wanted it to be fairly strong uh, using this Toner Plastics PETG. And it gives a little bit. It does have flex to it, but it is very strong. I did up my heat just a little bit to add a little bit extra of uh, the layer adhesion. So this was printed at 250 instead of 240 degrees. But yeah, this was really nice. I like it. I showed you guys the failure, so now let's look at the completed print of my gigantic 500% scaled up Fugatec 3D printing coin. This is great. So again, here's my hand against it. I have fairly large hands, and I can just about palm it like that, barely. I'm using the very top of it. I can't get around the whole thing. There we go, like that. If I put my finger in the middle. This is big. This came out great. The first one failed due to a thermistor issue, but I have a brand new thermistor on the FT5 now, no problems. This is baby smooth on the outside here. The bottom, again, as I said, the support sticks really hard. This is All these were printed on glue, and this support stuck on here pretty hard. I need to take a file or something and try and scrape off the last bit of the support. But on these overhang parts here, over the support with, P with a PLA, there's a lot of issues, a lot of stringing there. Zero with this. None of them are out of line. They are all very, very smooth. Not sidewall smooth, but pretty doggone close to it. And again, these walls just came out great. This was a 20% infill, scaled up to 500%. It just came out great. I cannot wait to hang this on the wall. This was just a fantastic model. And the filament, again, it just printed it out like a champ. It was great. So I've shown you functional prints. Showing you just a for fun print for huge. Now let's just do a single wall. Since this is a transparent filament, what's a single wall look like? And here it is. So this is the twisted heart. If you can see the heart there, it's kind of hard to see. Uh, there's a little bit easier. This is the twisted heart vase. And it starts here and just twists its way up. This is with one perimeter vase mode. So three or four bottoms. I can't remember exactly what I did in this one. Three or four bottoms one perimeter in vase mode. It does have flex to it, but it's strong. I mean, I can I can give this thing a good squeeze. And you can hear it. And it stays in its form, which is great. It's strong, great, great layer adhesion, and it has this really cool sheen to it. I guess it's just because of the way the design is, but it just, I mean, again, it just came out great. I'm super happy about it. Uh, this would be easy to scale up if you wanted to do something bigger, but I figured this would just be something cool to print it. Just I wanted to print something new in a vase mode. So this actually took quite a while. It slows down really a lot for these vase mode models. Just be prepared for that when you do it. Last model is this low poly Mario, but his feet are floppy. 
This was mostly my fault because I was a little too excited to get him off the build plate. So as I said, I used glue, so just uh, the uh, Elmer's glue stick, which I have right here on the side of the FT5, right there. Um, I used that on glass because that was the best thing that Pet G stuck to and that I could find. But this low poly Mario looks just amazing. He is super cool looking. I, finding this flowlistic is great. I'll definitely have this model down below for you guys to print. Uh, this was with a, I think, 5% info. I put something really low in there because I was worried about this flat part on the hat and I wanted to make sure something was gonna be there and there is support right underneath of it. So it did help it out. I was worried it was gonna droop. But other than that, worrying about that, I could have printed this uh, you know, empty. This is uh, three perimeters, uh, four top, four bottom, and again, 5% infill, so you can just barely see some of the lines in the sides of him and whatnot. But when I went to take him off the build plate, I grabbed a hold of him, I grabbed my putty knife, stuck it under there, and started to pry it up, but I felt a little bit of movement, so I just kind of pulled with this hand, and ksh, the feet just came right off. So clearly I had a little bit of layer adhesion issues with the first few layers. Uh, this one broke off, looks to be around the third or fourth layer, and this one broke off right around the 15th uh, layer, 15th or 20th layer. So it wasn't the same spot, but it was definitely weak in those places, and that was just a shame. So I know now to be a little bit more careful taking him off because he has such a small footprint. I mean, you can see just here, how small his feet really are compared to him. Uh, this is a 200% scale of the model, and he came out, it's just, this filament's really cool. I like it a lot. It's very, very cool stuff. So let's talk some specs. All these filament was printed at 240 degrees centigrade with a 90 degree bed, with the exception of this sponge piece. I printed this at 250. Again, if you want to get a little bit of a stronger print, you up your infill, and you up your temperature no more than like five degrees, 10 degrees max. Uh, everyone has different opinion on this, but my opinion, up your temperature a little bit, get better adhesion, and up your infill to have a much more uh, sturdier print. But again, you, that, that adhesion is what keeps parts like this, flexing that doggone much, uh, that's what keeps these connected. Because it's printed like this, you, the easiest and the weakest link is the layer. But if you have good layer adhesion, it's basically one piece of plastic and you don't have to worry about it snapping on you. So again, that goes a long way. Uh, my settings of my 3D is 70 or it's 80, I'm sorry, it's 80 millimeters a second. And so my 3D adjusts from there. Again, this vase mode ended up coming out to like 15 or 20 millimeters per second, simply because it just goes so slow going around there. The rest of these were all printed pretty much at that max speed with no problems whatsoever. It was great. Um, I had no adhesion issues. Again, glass with some glue. I tried printing on just glass. It didn't really want to stick very much. Added glue and it did not go anywhere. Uh, very, very good prints. Uh, also, my printer is very, very dialed in. So that also helps. But I mean, just so smooth. And it's, it's a really nice red. It really is, like looking at it. I like that you can see a little bit through it, but all you would have to do is up your bottom layers, top layers, and your perimeters, and you wouldn't be able to see the infill anymore. And it's again, like the sheen that's on this is really nice. This one almost looks a little bit orange uh, in comparison to like Mario uh, for how many layers he has. This is, uh, we had the same issue on, not issue, the Proto Paradigms uh, transparent red was the same type of deal. But anyways, like I said, this, this filament was great stuff. Um, so I just wanna give a big thanks out to Toner Plastics. Thank you for sending me this filament uh, and supporting my channel. Thank you for the PLA as well. Uh, that is everything that I have from them right now that I need to review. And it's been very well received. You guys are making a great filament. I would not toss it any other way than that. If it printed like crap, I would tell you, but you can see from all these prints, they come out really well. If your printer's dialed in and you know what you're doing, you can get some amazing prints with this filament. Pet G, I like it a lot. It's strong, it's still flexible, and it's just all around great. So if you guys wanna pick up this filament, I'll have a link down to Turn the Plastic Shop down below where you can pick that up. Tell them I said hi for no reason because it's not like I get anything. It would just be nice. So enjoy it. Again, this is Turner Plastic's Transparent Red Pet G, and it's some good stuff. 
If you guys like this video, please give it a like. If you didn't, please hit the dislike button. Let me know what I can do better down below. If you want to support the channel, you can do that many ways. First one being Patreon. You can sub support the channel via subscription, or you can use some affiliate links I have down below for Amazon and Makers Geek. I also have a coupon code that you can use for your first MakerBox, get 15% off. Proceeds come to help me get a free MakerBox, and I won't have to be out of pocket for that. And if I get enough subscriptions, you end up getting money into their shop, which would be great for me to pick up some of their exotic filaments. Thank you for watching, guys, and as always, happy printing.